Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host for the day. Just a few points of logistics before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded. So look for an email shortly after this recording, after this webinar, with a link to watch the session on demand. And please do share this with others in your organization. Perhaps even consider having a lunch and learn uh, with those in your organization. Due to the short nature of the webinar, we will likely not have time for questions. If you do have questions, uh, you can submit them using the GoToWebinar toolbar, and I can pass those along to the presenter, whether live or whether offline. And any questions we don't get, I'm sure our presenter would be more than happy to address those offline. Well, today's webinar in many ways is a lead up to the 2019 Toyota Kata Summit, uh, perhaps better known as uh, KataCon, which takes place February 18th and 19th in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. You can learn more about the summit by visiting uh, katasummit.com, K-A-T-A summit.com. I mentioned KataCon because our presenter today, Tilo Swartz, is one of the presenters of Katacon, and he'll actually be delivering an intensive hands-on session at Katacon uh, on the same topic as today's webinar. And there's Tilo right there. So, hi, Tilo. Hi, Dwayne. Um, it's important to note, as we're talking about Katacon and specifically Tilo's session, it's important to note that if you are interested in attending uh, the Kata Summit, and more specifically interested in attending Tilo's session, I'd recommend that you register as soon as possible. Tilo, if I'm not mistaken, we've established uh, that your workshop can only hold 40 participants. So just to give you some context, we have uh, more than 300 people watching here today. So of 40 spots, that doesn't give a lot of space there. So if, if, uh, if you are interested in the Kata Summit as well as Tilo's session, uh, I'd recommend that you get registered as soon as you can. So about our presenter today, uh, Tilo Swartz. Tilo is one of the world's top kata practitioners and coaches. He has served as plant manager where Toyota Kata was central to his organization's improvement program. Most recently, Tilo has co-authored the newest kata book, the uh, Toyota Kata Memory Jogger. And I'm hoping, Tilo, that you might tell us a little bit more about that book as you get going. So, Tilo, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. All right, Dwayne, thank you very much. So, hi, it's Tilo, and uh, I'm really happy and excited to have you here today. I started my CADA journey 2008, and when, when we started, I didn't imagine the movement CADA would become and it is today with uh, more and more individuals and companies picking up the concept, experimenting with it and, and building it into their daily, daily routines. What I also didn't imagine is how much magic, magic of growth we would see along the way and are seeing today even more and more. Magic of growth, when, when teams and individual grows, grow in their ability to solve problems, in their courage to strive for challenging goals, take self-initiative, and then all of a sudden this, this magic kicks in of flow, exploding ingenuity and they they reach things which uh, we and and even they themselves often didn't think uh, would be would be possible so Toyota Kata and coaching with Toyota Kata at its core is about helping others to grow and actually we could say coaching with Toyota Kata is coaching to grow so with, with all that in place, the question is, well, what, what is the key to the magic? And uh, we, we have learned in the, in the past years that, that one of the essential keys 
of unlocking this magic is the ability of the coach. And, and with Toyota Kata getting bigger and bigger, more and more people joining, joining the movement, I sometimes have the feeling that this gets a little bit out of focus. Or in other words, the ability that is developed and the ability individuals and, and teams acquire will, will, of course, never be better than the ability of the coach. So this is why, why one of the challenges I've been striving for in, in the past years has been, and, and still is, how can we develop better coaching skills for ourselves? And, and also, how can we develop better coaching skills in others? And uh, in, in our today's webinar, I would like to share with you a couple of things I have learned, and especially a, a method I call the, the Kata Dojo. So the, the Kata Dojo is for coaches that really want to step up their game in, in helping others to grow. And it's also for second coaches that uh, want to step up their game in, in helping coaches to grow. And, and compared to, to other development methods, it's a very hands-on practical method that especially focuses on high repetition and practicing because as we as we came to understand that is that persistent and precise repetition makes us to become perfect so before we dive into the into the kata dojo i would like to share a couple of learnings i've had on how does coaching ability develop and a, a model i like to use is the three learning phases that I've seen kata coach, coaches go through and, and also seen my, myself go through. So usually we start out with a phase uh, I call the phase where we learn the coaching kata. So actually, actually, what do we learn and what do we focus on? Well, in this phase, as a coach, usually we focus on ourselves. And if we listen uh, to our improver, uh, we, we often focus on the content. Uh, or in other words, when you, when you see a coach starting out with a coaching kata, in this phase, uh, it's very common to have your, your coaching card in hand. And, and most coaches feel a little bit like this. They, they read the questions, and they're so focused on the questions that they don't even hear the answer of the improver. So actually, what, what, what needs to be learned here is the structure of the coaching cycle, and as I call it, the cornerstone questions, which we will come back to later on. So once we've, we've mastered this basic structure of the coaching cycle, uh, which is reassembled by the coaching kata actually being a starter kata for the coach, uh, we move on. And, and all of a sudden, we, we start hearing and listening to the answers the improver is giving. And, and we also realize that these answers are situational and, and need a situational reaction. So we ask a question and we hear, oh, the answer is not exactly what I expected. So our focus now shifts more and more to the method. So to how is the improver proceeding? And in this phase, as a coach, we need to learn how to ask deepening questions. So how can we assist and support the improver to be more precise and to work more precise? Uh, once we've math mastered that, we, we can move on. And actually, phase three is where I feel coaching really starts, because that is the phase where we start developing our improver's ability. So we, we can now, because we're, we're free of struggling with different situations. We can now focus on the person. And in this phase, we're, we're learning how to use developing questions. Now, for those of you that are working as a second coach, here are a couple of thoughts. Uh, what should we be doing as second coaches in these, uh, three, in these three phases? So first of all, when, when we talk about developing 
coaches with the, with the Toyota Kata. We have established this role of the second coach. And the, the idea is that the second coach observes the coaching cycle and then gives, gives feedback. So here's a, here's a couple of thoughts. Well, first of all, in, in this phase of, the, of learning the coaching kata, coaching situational and developing ability, uh, we could use the approach of observing, giving feedback, and maybe even, even coaching the coach, so as a second coach. Nevertheless, I have the feeling that this is probably best used in the third phase, when a coach is already quite, quite capable. Uh, be, why do I think so? Well, here, here's an idea. Uh, imagine a ski coach working with a beginner, and the ski coach realizes that the beginner has not properly tied his ski to the boot. Well, likely the, the ski coach will tell him, and very likely he will not coach him on that or let him run and, and wait till he stumbles over and then give him some feedback. So actually, in the beginning, in the learning of the coaching kata, it's probably a better approach to go for show and explain. So come with me, I'll, I'll show you and explain what we're doing. And then use some exercises offline, like the domino exercise or, or maybe the puzzle to have a higher repetition in using the starter kata, coaching, the five coaching questions, and, and immediately correct. Uh, which is, of course, hard to do if that would be a real-life coaching cycle. So then there's a little bit like a threshold, maybe here, where we have, when we master the coaching cara, the five questions, and then we can, can move on. But still, uh, it's, it's difficult to learn from feedback. Uh, so imagine a coach is able to do the five questions and is now struggling with certain situations uh, with his uh, improver in the coaching cycle. And a second coach observes and um, gives him some feedback. And even if the feedback is very good and, and precise and, and to the point, and the coach says, yes, I, I get it, that's good feedback, uh, how likely is it that the same situation will reoccur tomorrow? Or in other words, how likely is it that we, he will have a close by opportunity in putting our feedback into practice? Well, that's, that's very likely, so unlikely. So um, once the situation comes back, he might have forgotten our feedback or it will be very hard for him, in other words, to, to practice what we've just explained to him. So the question I've asked myself is, what can we do in this phase? And that's what we're going to focus on in this, in this webinar today. So before, before we jump into the, what to do in this phase, uh, let's understand a little bit deeper what happens in the, in the coaching cycle. Well, the coaching cycle is very close to a situation we, we often have uh, when, when, a ski, when we're taking a ski coach. So what does a ski coach do? Well, first of all, when you, when you meet with a ski coach, and I'm assuming you can ski a little bit, um, he will not immediately tell you what to do, but he will rather give you a task, uh, let you do it, then he will observe, and then, and that is, is the crucial part when we talk about coaching, he will compare this observation he has with a reference he has in his mind. And depending on the deviation between observation and reference, he will have a reaction. Actually, that is exactly the same what we do in the coaching cycle. So in the coaching cycle, with the coach and improver uh, meeting at the storyboard, the coach opens the coaching cycle with asking a question. This is just the same as the ski coach giving a task. Then the improver reacts by giving an answer and now the coach's task is to evaluate the answer in his mind and compare it to a reference and depending on his evaluation uh, react with for example deepening questions or, or just continue in the, in the conversation. Of course, now the question is, what is the reference? And, and one of our answers has been, well, the reference is the improvement kata. So a coach needs to have a good feeling and then needs to learn how to apply the improvement kata first. Nevertheless, I have the impression that that is too vague for, for coaches to really step up their game in, in, in coaching. Or we could say, in other words, at its core, good coaching skill 
as, as one of the important ingredients, is a good reference for the coach. So what I would like to share with you is a couple of tips and tricks for the coach to build such a reference. And here's, here's my trick number one. Well, assuming the coach you're working with or for yourself, you have mastered the five questions in the, in the coaching kata, which are concerning the target condition, the actual condition, the obstacles, defining a next experiment, and then, of course, agreeing on a, on a due date. Well, one reference you can use is seeing these questions not so much as questions, but more as faces of the coaching cycle. So a coaching cycle has five phases and uh, has like, like gates in entering the next phase. So a first re good reference for a coach is this. The answer from my improver should match the current phase I'm in. I'll give you an example. So sometimes in phase number three, that is about the obstacles, choosing an obstacle, understanding the root cause, so where the, the coach is asking, about the obstacles, the improver will give an answer which is not an obstacle but the next step. So for example, the coach asks, so what, which obstacle are you going to address? And the answer is something like, well, I will do this and that. So this is clearly a, a, a mismatch, which is the first reference for the coach. Um, here, some reaction needed. We could go even further. We could say, well, each phase phase has like a quality gate or in other words the the five questions of the coaching kata I like the the opening questions the gate opening questions of a next phase so they're not the whole conversation they're not the whole phase so the first check the coach should do when he asks the opening question is is this kind of answer I get to this question precise enough so we, we could call the five questions like the cornerstone questions of the conversation. And we should only ask the next one if the previous one has been answered precisely. Of course, the question now is what is precise? And, and this is where partly coaching ability lies, to having a good reference to, to evaluate. Is this precise enough? Can I go on? Or should I ask deepening questions to go deeper? Uh, another trick that comes from that is if an improver cannot answer a cornerstone question precise enough, probably it's time for doing a next step to understand better. So what I've just done now is, is giving you some instructions on how to coach better. Nevertheless, uh, no matter how logic they might be, you haven't put them into practice yet. Or we could say this is a very common situation when, when second coaches observe a coaching cycle. We give feedback, we give some instructions, but of course getting feedback is not being able to do it. So working on this challenge I've been working on, how can we create better coaching ability in faster time? I was struggling in how can we give coaches opportunity to practice the feedback? And I found something in sports which I think is very interesting and helpful for us in developing coaching skill. And that is in sports, we distinguish between two different situations. So one is the game, whereas the other, there's practice. So on Saturday, there's the game. During the week, we have practice. So where do we learn? Well, of course, we learn new ability and hone our abilities in practice. What do we do in the game? Well, we apply. So what's the task of the coach or in our context of the second coach? Well, during the game, the coach, coach, coach observes and identifies the fields of learning. And then we move back to the practice where we improve on these individual fields of learning by frequent repetition of specific exercises the coach or coach coach has designed. So what about feedback? Well, feedback should happen in practice. Well, in reality, it sometimes happens in the game, but likely it will not, not help very much. So let's transfer that back to, to our kata coaching cycle. 
Well, the real coaching cycle outside, when we work on the projects and work with people to develop their ability, that's the game. So then what about practice? So I've been working on, on a way to create a practice situation for coaches to hone their coaching skills. And that is what I call the Kata Dojo. And here is how it works. So in the Kata Dojo, we usually work with three roles. And, and the trick is a little bit like this. We, we have an improver and we have a coach. But you can see me here in the role of the improver. And actually, I'm just acting as an improver. So in the Kata Dojo, the improver is a simulated improver. And what I came to realize is that when I work as an improver, having the knowledge about the coaching kata, I can simulate for my coach any kind of situation. So how does it, how does it work? Well, the improver repeatedly simulates the same situation within a coaching cycle. So first of all, we don't do a complete coaching cycle. We just pick out the specific situation the coach currently is struggling with. Next. The coach can try to coach that situation. The observer will observe and give him a short feedback after each round, which gives, again, the coach the, the opportunity to repeatedly go through the same situation and increase his skills. So I'll give you an example of a couple of exercises we're, we're doing in the Kata Dojo. And they are all based on observations uh, of, of coaches and situations coaches are frequently struggling with, especially uh, in the in the beginning. In order to have a topic to talk about, uh, we use a very simple process. It's, it's an artificial process and it's, I'll show it here. It's um, basically a paper plane that needs to be thrown into a target, a bucket that is about two meters away. We're, we're actually not even throwing the paper plane. It's just to have something to talk about. Uh, there, there's two variables uh, that are influencing the hit rate of the paper plane. Uh, which is the flying distance, and of course there could be a cross deviation, which could be to to both sides. So I'll just give you the target condition on this, so that we can talk uh, a little bit about and, and go through some real case exercises in the Kata Dojo. So here's the the T template, the target condition for the Kata Jet process. So the challenge is having 100% hit rate, five throws out of five, for example and the due date on that is six months. So for our next target condition, which is due in four weeks, we have an outcome metric, which is increase the hit rate from 20 to 40%. And uh, we have a couple of framing conditions. So for example, there's no design changes on the paper plane. The budget is, is quite low. Um, we have the two variables I've mentioned. So the hit rate is influenced by the accuracy in the flight distance, and it's also influenced by the accuracy in the cross deviation, which are currently, as you can see, quite quite bad, uh, plus minus 120 and plus minus 80 centimeters. So in order to hit a target of 40 centimeters diameter, we would need like a, a flight distance of 200 plus minus 20 and a cross deviation of plus minus 20 centimeters. Um, for our first target condition, we would like to focus on the flight distance, so that makes the flight distance our process metric. Uh, don't, don't worry too much about uh, all the details here. I'm just, just setting this up. Uh, if you remember, target condition is hit rate, 40%. Therefore, we have to improve on stability of flight distance, uh, 200 plus minus 20 centimeters. That's good enough for, for today. So here is a, here's the first exercise. And that is in, in, in phase one. And that is about having a precise target condition. A problem coaches often struggle with is that the improver explains the target condition way too general or only in parts. So the Kata Dojo exercise always starts with the question of the coach. In this case, it's what is your target condition? And then we have a predefined answer of the improver, which creates this difficulty for the coach. In this case, I've, I've uh, brought with me two possible answers, and we'll just look at them. So answer number one is the improver answers, my target condition is to improve the Kata Jet process, which is, of course, much too general. And answer B would be, well, the challenge is to reach a hit rate of 100% within six months. At first, we aim for a hit rate of just 40%. 
but this will not be possible. So let's go with that to the Kata Dojo. And um, imagine the coach starting out here with the question, what is your target condition? And the improver then goes, well, my target condition is to improve the Kata Jet process. So what would your answer be? I'll just give you a couple of seconds to, to think about that. Well, a typical answer from the coach or reaction from the coach is just to move on. So he would say like, what is the actual condition now? And then we will probably end up with something like, well, the process is not good enough. And you can, you can see how imp imprecision is, is building up. So what would be a better way? Well, here's a trick for the coach. If an answer does not contain data where there should be data contained, a good question could be, what does this mean in data? So let's, let's give the coach another opportunity to practice that. So we have the same set out, but now the coach reacts with the question, what does this mean in data? And then of course, this, this already limits the possibilities for the improver and the improver might answer something like, well, my target condition is to reach a hit rate of 40%. Therefore, we have to improve flight distance to such and such. Well, it, we're going a little bit quickly here, and, and you might think that is very, very simple, but, but give it a try um, with a colleague to, to see how that works for you. Uh, let's just quickly look, because we're coming to the end of the webinar, at the second possibility. Well, imagine here the coach again asks, what is your target condition? And, and the improver has this lengthy answer and ends with, but this will not be possible. Well, a reaction of a lot of coaches in the beginning is something like, why do you think this is not possible? And of course, then the improver will give us some explanation here, um, and that will take the, the conversation in a totally different direction. Well, the trick for the coach here could be to, instead of hearing what is not so good about the answer, focus on what is good. And that is, he, the improver has mentioned part of the target condition. And we could use a second trick here, which is if the answer is not precise enough, simply repeat the question and add what you would like to know. So this would play out a little bit like this. So the, the, the coach would just repeat the question, what is your target condition, and add regarding your process indicator, because actually that is the part that is missing, or process metric. And then the improver would likely answer something like, well, improve the flight distance to 200 plus minus 20 centimeters. So that is just a quick impression here um, while, how the Kata Dojo works. It, it might look simple to you, in, but it feels very, very real. And if you would like to give it a try or a start, here's a couple of things you could do. Well, a first step is seeing what is not working in a coaching cycle. So you could, you could do something like that and say, well, after your daily coaching cycle, always write down one thing you're struggling with. Keep doing that. And if you like to do it, um, write me an email and, and give me a couple of hints what you're struggling with. And next thing you could do, and Dwayne, you've already mentioned that, you could have a look at the Toyota Kata Memory Jogger I've been co-authoring uh, with uh, two of my colleagues from Canada, Jean-Marc and Marc-Olivier. And uh, this is a very, very small hand, hand book here. You see that the hand, hand size here, you can have it in your pocket. And you'll find a lot of tips and tricks, also the two I've mentioned uh, for the coach. Another thing you could do, you could um, go to the Canadoja website, um, which you will find in the, in the handout, and there's a a lot of it's a secret website you will not find in Google, but if you go directly there, you will see you will see that, and you will find an instruction how to get your Kata Dojo started. If you're lucky and you live in Sweden um, and happen to have time in March next year, you could join with Pia and Joachim, two colleagues from Sweden, which are running a Kata Dojo there. And um, don't forget here your first step. After the daily coaching cycle, always write down one thing you were struggling with. Mail it to me. And, and why I would ask you to mail it to me is this. Well, if you then get to Katacon in February, where we will be running the, the Kata Dojo with the Kata Dojo inside here, um, 
I could share with you a couple of exercises specifically for the situations you've been struggling with. So I hope you enjoyed this idea of how to improve coaching ability and I'll hand it, hand it back to, to Dwayne uh, to finish with our webinar today. Thank you very much. So very, very interesting, Tilo. It sounds like you're, you're creating opportunities to, as you said, to practice so that when you go into the actual game, you're applying what you've practiced. So uh, interesting concept here and look forward to uh, finding ways to, to, to establish that practice. So T Tilo, thanks, uh, thanks for doing uh, the, the short webinar today and thanks for your thought leadership and your recent contributions with the, uh, the the book, The Memory Jogger. I know it'll be a valuable contribution to the Kata community. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, you will receive an email within an hour after this webinar ends with a link to the recording of this session. So please do share this with others in your organization and begin this conversation of what a Kata Dojo may look like in your particular organization. And as uh, Tilo did mention, and as actually has it up on the screen here, please do join us for the Kata Summit, February 18th and 19th in Savannah, Georgia, uh, where we're gonna be celebrating a number of milestones. And Tilo, I don't know if you've heard this, but the milestones, uh, we did not plan this. They just kind of happened to where this is the fifth year for the Kata Summit. It's the 10th year since Toyota Kata was published. It's the 15th year since the Toyota Jeff Liker's Toyota Way was published, and Jeff is actually going to be at the Kata Summit. And finally, if, the, if, the, if that wasn't enough, it'll be the 20th year since Mike Rother's Learning to See was published. So when I say celebrate, I mean that we're going to celebrate some very significant milestones to the lean community, to the Kata community, to the improvement community. So please do join us. Uh, we're going to have some things like the backwards bicycle, which uh, you maybe have seen on YouTube, uh, really uh, showing how we establish these patterns of behavior in our minds. Uh, we're going to have somebody that's going to play the Australian didgeridoo, <laughs> um, and then some other fun surprises and interesting new opportunities to learn. So. Please do register today. Uh, as I said, uh, Tilo's Kata Dojo workshop will likely fill up, uh, if not today, uh, early next week. Um, so you can go to katasummit.com to learn more. Uh, thanks again, Tilo, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's short webinar. And we hope to see you soon. Have a good day.